And welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, as always, we kick start by looking through the major stories making headlines across the country. And today will not be different. We're going to be speaking this morning with two persons, Mr. Demola Kimbala, who's going to be joining us online. Uh, thank you so much. He's a publisher of the Podium News. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, uh, Mr. Kimbala. We also have in studio uh, with us Ms. Agbolaon Olojede, who's a regular on The Breakfast. Thank you also for stepping in. Thank you. Good morning. Part of the program. Good to be here. Yes, so we're beginning this morning with, uh, let's see, let's go straight to uh, the Nigerian Tribune. This first one says, Northern elders to Fulani, return to north if ejected from south. Sultan or Basanjo IBB, others eulogize Oyitola Lola at 70. Federal government establishes polytechnics in Oyo Plateau. $40 million worth of jewelry seized from Desiani to be sold off. Our decision on strike still stands, Nasu Sanu tells FG. Hopefully, we have arrested impending strikes, and that's according to Ingigi. This one says, Faemi tells Chatham House, Nigeria mobilized over $95 million to combat COVID-19. 80 million doses of vaccines expected in 2021. And some other big ones, FG extends NIN SIM linkage deadline by eight weeks. Smugglers open fire on customs patrol teams in Jaw 4. And uh, this one from the Nigeria Port Authority MPA saying, Apapa Port now connected to Lagos Ibadan Standard Gauge Rail. Yes, these are the top stories <laughs> on the front pages of the Nigerian Tribune this morning. A, 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 a good place to start might be the good news. And that okay. is the connection of a papa port to the Lagos Ibadan Rail. Um, back in the 50s or even before then, colonial masters understand the importance of rail to the economy. Uh, well, for them, it was to take our stuff out of Nigeria to, to, the, to the port and then export it. Um, so it was a critical trade infrastructure, but somewhere along the line, uh, we lost it. Mm. If you still go to a papa port today, you see that same old rail that went into the port. We abandoned it, we brought all the trucks from heaven and hell, and we messed up everywhere. So it is good news to know that that linkage has happened. So there's a standard gauge extended from the former terminals right into the port. That will help trade tremendously. Yeah, but do we have the trains for it? Are we going to drive buses on the... On the of course, if you have the... The rail actually come before the, yes. the, the, the train. Now that we have a rail, I believe all these are, you know, arrangements will have been made mm. uh, for some of the rails to be there. And we can continue to invest in more and more rails, uh, uh, trains. Uh, the, this is also, and I'm, you know, sorry we're dragging on this one, but this is, you know, stereotypical of, you know, how we've managed a lot of uh, things in the country for the last 60 years. Um, we've had these facilities and we just let them to, you know. Rot. We let them to rot away. And there are a whole lot of them all over the whole places. And, and, and don't also forget that um, the, the worst part are the government enterprises. A whole lot of them that are non-productive. They're not doing anything. Some are probably literally shut down. We cannot even print our own money. Yes, <sighs> it's as bad Let's as turn to so, another good one. news, supposedly. FG extending the NIN SIM linkage deadline by eight weeks. What are well, your comments? <laughs> at least they're listening to, and they're also observing what is going on. Um, it, was, it was a hurry, hurry kind of project when it started. And what I expected mm -hmm. is that, okay, now that we have jumped into it without properly looking through, it means we have to do periodic review to look at where are we, where are we still going, and then... We can realign whatever plans we had. So it was meant to be two weeks that ended in December. We got it extended to February. Now we're getting an additional uh, two months to make it happen. It will help us um, with, the, with the COVID uh, scare. Then it will make it uh, more comfortable for people uh, to also uh, get it done. Does mm -hmm. this um, in, in any way, um, the Nigerian behavior to extension of deadlines, do you think it will make Nigerians relax and say, okay, well, I have eight weeks, so it, I don't need to rush and get it done? It's going to play out. Uh, once you extend something, everybody wait till the last two weeks um, and, and before, before they start. But if, if they sustain the awareness, I could see uh, the telcos are advertising Oh, if I make a call now, the first message I've yes. heard is to go and do my NI. So if we continue the awareness, maybe this time around, 
uh, people will sustain the temple and everybody will get Okay, uh, so there's this uh, theory on social media. People are saying the government actually, in fact, want Nigerians to get registered by the end of 2022. But they will just give you temporary deadlines just to create panic and create fear and make everybody register. I don't know what you think. <laughs> 2022 about that. Is, a, is, a, is, a, is a long time. If, you, if, if that starts making round and it gets popular, people will just abandon the thing. Mm. They won't and do neglect it. The Until process. that two weeks to that 2022 deadline. Okay, <laughs> let's move to our uh, guest who's joining us online, Demola Kimbala. Good morning, sir. Thanks morning. for joining us. Thank you for having me again today. Good morning, Mr. Abadadeh. Good morning. Right. So we're on the Nigerian Tribune this morning, and we discussed uh, already two big stories here. Uh, I don't know if you would like to take this one on the front page of the, uh, the Nigerian Tribune. It says, Northern Elders to Fulani return to North if ejected from South. Do you agree? Uh, well, it's um, an ominous sign. It's not something that should be happening in 21st century Nigeria. But unfortunately, that's where we find ourselves today. Um, it's um, the clearest indication yet that we don't have a country and we don't have a nation. But let's um, cast our mind back to uh, the, the, the circumstances that led to the uh, first military coup in 1966. And of course, the civil war. This was how it started. Pogroms, the killings, the hatred, um, the moment that we cannot live together in unity irrespective of our religious or ethnic affiliations, that is the clearest yet that the country has failed. So I really don't think the solution is asking them to go back. They need to live with their host communities in peace, comply with extant rules and regulations, and stop terrorizing people. I'm sure, I'm sure if we're able to do that, um, there will be no need for them because we need each other. No. Let's, 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 let's just face the fact we need each other. But if you get to a state where we are asking them to go back, okay, their leaders are calling them, then of course it, it's a lot of things will follow subsequently that we will not be able to predict or control. So for me, it's not a good development. Uh, we may say, yes, good treatments of bad rubbish, but of course we have our people out there in other states also. So what's going to happen to them? Are we going to ask them to come back home? So All right. that is just, we need to remember exactly how the civil war started there. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Akimola, let, let's now move to the nation newspapers. Uh, there's a couple of big ones there that we can also find. Uh, the major one that you can see on your screen says, anxiety over killer headers uh, persists in Oyo and Kwara. Uh, you can also see the NSCDC deploys 150 operatives in crisis area. Police and traditional rulers parley in Ilori. Also, this uh, on the nation, court strikes out Saraki's suit against Kwara. And government varsity workers talks uh, collapse. Um, passenger held with 7 billion naira worth of cocaine at uh, the Lagos airport. Ooh, this is not looking good. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> good luck to him. We can also see on the nation, 36.4 billion naira foreign reserves keep the naira stable. And uh, NIMED predicts food shortage this year. Um, Ondo doctors on strike over pay. And then top of the screen, you can see there, 56.2 million NINs linked to SIMS. Deadline now, 6th of April. And um, a sad one, bandits kill 21, abduct 40 in Niger State, three gone down in Kaduna. Speaker, governors, IBB, and ministers mourn Momo. President orders IG Adamu to hand over. All right, Demela um, Kumunga, we'll start with you um, on the nation. Yeah. You can pick um, anyone you want to kick off with. Yeah, quickly let me um, talk about the fact that so far we've got 56.2 million in Tunga. That's a good development. That's probably 25% uh, or so of the Nigerian population. And it's a work of development that the, the, the debt has been increased. That's what we've always advocated for, I said it here about two or three weeks ago, that the deadline was not going to be realistic. So I'm mean, it's good. And like we said, oh, Mr. Abadi said, maybe the Nigerians will wait again for a week to the end of the new deadline. But so far, so good um, that we have that number. Um, the issue of insecurity in Nigeria, it's, it's, it's getting to a state where you begin to wonder what's going on. Okay, we said here last week that the replacement of service chiefs would not put an end 
to the killings and kidnapping. There are systemic issues that need to be addressed. A lot of things need to be put in place. But the question is, are we going to food arms and allow this to, 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 to continue unabated? It, it, it's sad, really. Um, a friend of ours went to Nigeria for Christmas, was kidnapped on Wednesday or Tuesday. Yesterday we heard that he's been killed from, 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 from US there to go back home. So every day you read about kidnapping, about killings, and beyond the placement of service chiefs, the commander in chief, president, all the governors need to do something drastically. Uh, talking about the foreign reserves, good developments that six point four billion dollars are keeping Naira stable. My question is for how long? But what we're doing that we are propping the Naira. We're propping the Naira and the question is for how long? While this will work on the short term, we should be looking at long term strategies that will make sure that we increase our foreign reserves, we will be earn more foreign estate. And that is where we can have the Naira being stable over a long period of time. Well done for too long. It's it probably something to start with. Yeah. And All right. good luck to this guy. It's a worth of cocaine. It, it, it shows how desperate Nigerians are. Nothing has changed in terms of how desperate people are uh, to make money. But kudos to NDLEA for being able to um, arrest the suspects. And we hope that more hmm. of such suspects will also be fished up wherever they are. Luckily, oh. luckily for him, he was uh, caught here in Nigeria. If he was in Indonesia or Malaysia, the mm -hmm. story might be different. Oh, yeah. Um, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Lujini, I want to... Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I don't know if you saw the story over the weekend where a, a woman was apprehended. She, okay, she caught, um, rather, they found a, a, the 30 billion naira worth of cocaine on her. She said, you know, they were going to pay her about 2 million naira. The story made the rounds over the weekend. I don't know if you're It just tells it. really that, you know, it's a, great, it's a big business here in Nigeria. You know, we probably are not paying that much attention to it, but yeah. Nigeria is, you know, is seems to be a great routes, a transit, you know, route for. I, 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 for, I think for we're drugs. even going beyond just being a transit route to being consumers of drugs. Mm. Um, we might not be able to afford cocaine. I mean, the real pure cocaine for a lot of users. But things like Colorado, like uh, also sort of uh, uh, what's the other one? Codeine, crack, all sort of things are here, and they are closely linked to that spate of insecurity that we keep talking about. Um, you know, people lo looking at a kid in the face and killing them or beheading them. It's not because you are in full consciousness of yourself. A lot of times, those things are done under the influence of, of drugs. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm delighted that um, about the new guy, it might just be a sentiment. When Marwa was governor in Lagos, he did two things I will never forget. He fixed our roads. Meanwhile, the governor before him said there were no bitumen. Then security was phenomenal. The whole place was riddled with crime. And in the days of Marwa, we had the operation sweep that cleaned Lagos. So I'm believing that if that agency is funded, Marwa will deliver. It might just be pure sentiment, but maybe it's also psyching him up to say, look, some of us have high expectations of him. Yes. Let yes. him deliver. All right. Let's quickly deliver. speak on yeah. the NIMED prediction also of food shortage uh, this year. Food shortage for several reasons. Insecurity is one of them. As those farmers are leaving the farm because they are scared of invaders, um, it means they will not plant when it is uh, supposed to be. Um, the weather has also been a little bit unpredictable. So a combination of high insecurity level with unpredictability of the seasons uh, um, is, is, is a combo for disaster, you know. So I, I'm hoping that the, 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 there's a food uh, security kind of agency, there's a plan of, of for our government that it will, it will step on this and, and do something. I, I had the price of corn uh, in the market yesterday. I, w I was worried. Corn? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's the one that I would... I would, I would lose it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn to the I next paper now, the Nation newspaper. It says uh, PTF, that's Presidential Tax Force, saying that COVID-19 killed for, I beg your pardon, going over now to the Punch newspaper. Uh, this one says, uh, panic in NYC headquarters, camps as resident officer dies of COVID-19. Panic in NYC headquarters and camps. 
as resident officer dies of COVID-19. Uh, NYC saying he contracted COVID-19. He was referred to the NTDC and died outside the camp. And uh, spokesman is saying there was no infections in the camp. Workers accused NYC of hiding the case. And uh, the scheme also saying they tested everybody, including resource persons and market operators. Uh, this one also here says, telcos collect 56.18 million liens. FG fixes April deadline. 70 million Nigerians to be vaccinated by 2022, according to FireMe. IG welcomes Buhari from Katsina amid handover rumor. Poor Nigerians will increase by 15 million soon, according to the World Bank. This one says, Oyo, Abuja, four states to witness shorter famine season. That stood on the food shortage prediction uh, by Nimitz. This one says, Bloodbath has 29 killed, 40 abducted in Niger, Sokoto, Kaduna. Protests rocks Ogun as customs smugglers clash, leaves one dead. And uh, foreign herdsmen behind killing, kidnappings in forest reserves, according to Akiri Dolu. In addition to other stories here about Ntilu Momo's book about his life and uh, a judge discovering uh, three children uh, with his ex-wife aren't his. Uh, this story, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's big. Paternity fraud issue circling back here. Uh, this is a judge in the country saying he discovered that three children with his ex-wife are not his. And, many, and that's uh, many years after, you know, he's trained them in school. Mm. They're all big now. And his but well, I think legally they're still his anyway. Yeah, yeah. According to the law, right? According because he law. had the children when well, they were the married. the wedlock subsisted. So <laughs> they're, they're still his. But it's, it's, it's a disaster for, um, for the male person. Uh, the male is all ego and a whole lot of things around him. So... So for him to discover 20 years or 19 years or 15 years down the lane that the woman who has been sleeping beside me has also been on a sex romp outside somewhere there for how long you don't know. It's a disaster that most men will never recover from. You could see the, the, from the tone of this that that man is probably going to go to his grave with that pain in his mind. Mr. Adamola, yeah. let, me, let me bring you in here to throw in a controversial <laughs> question. Uh, it doesn't apply to this particular story, but generally, you've seen cases where women will say their husbands were infertile and they wanted to protect his ego, so to speak, and would go ahead and have you know relations outside of marriage just to protect his ego and protect their marriage. Do you, do you think that's a valid excuse uh, for paternity fraud? Totally unacceptable. <laughs> Totally unacceptable. Uh, it, it's, it's a matter of conjecture what led the woman to do what she did. We don't know if the, but going by the fact that this man has four children from his second marriage, so which means he probably doesn't have fertility issues. But be that as it may, that is not an excuse. If, you're, if, if your partner is infertile for one reason or the other, you stick with it. You can't go outside and bring children simply because, oh, he's not able to perform. That is not acceptable at all. And I mean, it, it is a big blow for the marriage institution. It's, it, it is a big blow for advocates of um, one man, one wife, because now people are going to say, are you sure that the children that she has for you are yours? Mm -hmm. And I bet you every man will go out there and be doing DNA just secretly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's sad, it's really sad. The NHS so, for him to have discovered at this age, yes. at this stage of his life, yeah, it's, it's yeah. really unfortunate. Not even sure how to react to that. I, I would say that DNA testing labs must be cashing out this period. Yeah. People well, rushing I, to I, I, check I advise people the... not to go there. <laughs> oh yeah, it is, right. If you if yeah. you eventually find out that they are yours, you will have hurt your wife because you have put her integrity onto the test. Yes, yeah. true. Well, you that's know. if you if, if you're doing if it he goes openly. Right. I mean, if he goes wrong, you are going to be devastated. Yes. Probably will never recover from it. So I'm asking myself, of why bother? What <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I, well, I don't. I don't know if I would agree entirely. I know. You know, oh, I know. A lot of people don't agree on that. I mean, it's a just level trust. of betrayal. I mean, just trust. So, so I've also heard conversations where people try to equate, you know, you know, um, paternity fraud with you know men who have children outside and the woman never knows until they they pass, you know, and. I, I, which oh, which come is to think of it, well. all these kids that we're talking about, they were fathered by somebody. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the same thing that we're accusing the women of. It is the men that yes, are also true. involved in making it happen.
That's true. So why why is the pressure on the woman and also not on the men who are, who are doing the Well, the other man might be single. <laughs> I may oh also God, not be. Sorry, he doesn't on. have a <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> commitment to anybody entirely. You know. Let's, um, look at the, let's look at the big story here on the Punch newspaper. It's not the first time an agency of government is coming out to accuse the government for, or, or that particular agency for of hiding COVID-19 cases within the agency. We saw that happened with NIMC. NIMC workers saying the cases of COVID-19 among their staff, but the government is hiding that and insisting that workers or Nigerians should still come out in mass and register. And now uh, we see workers in the NYC scheme accusing the NYC of hiding cases of COVID-19 in the camp, and this is just as one resident of has died of the virus. Uh, your thoughts, Mr. Adimola? Yes, um, not something to be proud or to be happy about, but wherever you find a complication of human beings, definitely you, 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 you shouldn't be surprised to find things like this. What I would suggest is for the NCTC to, I mean, to move in quickly and conduct independent tests. There's no point arguing over where he died or what happened. Let's have independent tests across all the camps. Okay, um, nothing is beneath the average Nigeria these days. If people in Lagos can be selling fake COVID-19 results, then there's nothing that stops NYSO officials from also hoarding information or shielding um, the true situation, shielding that from the press. So let, let the NCDC move around or the NYC caps and conduct independent tests. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Lodjede, there's also something here on the punch. It says uh, poor Nigerians will increase by 15 million um, soon, and that's from the World Bank. Uh, we've had um, certain programs uh, by the current administration, uh, poverty alleviation programs. They've also been uh, speaking about lifting 100 million people out of poverty. There are people who have been given 5,000 naira each or plan to be given 5,000 naira each. Um, how would you rate you know, the performance with regards to lifting Nigerians out of poverty and the fears by the World Bank? Uh, lifting Nigerian out, Nigerians out of poverty was a scheme that had no idea that it was going to be a, a COVID-19. It was, it was done about two years ago. Um, COVID has come and it came with a whole lot of trouble uh, from the crash in oil price. We even thank God it's coming up. That's why our reserve is, is showing up gradually. Um, so, and it has affected economies all over the whole world as, as, as it is. So it will definitely affect that plan to, to uh, take people out of poverty. Now, how we handle it is what will determine whether 10 million or 5 million or 15 million additional people will come into poverty. I, I think so far, government is trying on the short term side of things that's why you have all those attempts at doing some palliatives, making some money available, and, and, and all sorts. But we now have to go beyond the short term, because taking people out of poverty are not short-term measures. Mm. Absolutely not. All right. Um, the Daily Independent, I, if we have uh, the time, I think we can just uh, quickly have a few uh, stories from the Daily Independent. COVID-19, Kogi government threatens to sue PTF. NCDC alleges uh, they have turned COVID-19 to business. 400 billion naira for vaccine, too much. And that's from uh, uh, Peter Obi, former Anambra state governor. Um, I remember we had spoken with the um, one of the special advisors or commissioner from Kogi State not long ago, and he, he said that um, the figures are false. He basically said that there was no COVID-19 in Kogi State, first of all, and then uh, some of the you know statements that the PTF are making are false, that mm -hmm. they are simply um, exaggerating COVID-19's, um, um, what we're dealing with in the country yeah. uh, to scare the presidency. I also claimed that Taba Kiari may not have died from COVID-19 and you know some of all those things were, were lies. And the, and the president's um, reaction declaring Kogi as a high-risk state, saying yeah. they're not testing, they're not creating isolation centers, they're basically, you know, Because it always feels like they don't virus. believe that it exists. But yes. It will get worse for them. Okay, but, but, but let's, all oh, right, oh, Hoodlum's kill inspector, burn station in Abia. Your strategy may set the Southwest on fire, Nans warns Igbo. And also mm -hmm. Nigeria to provide 80 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines in 2021. Strike, varsity workers parley in, or federal government and varsity workers parley inconclusive. Um, I think we've taken most of uh, the rest of uh, those. So let, let's bring uh, Mr. Kimbola in and hopefully Mr. Olojide with uh, Peter Obi's views on 400 billion naira being too much 
uh, for vaccines. Do you agree? Well, my question to Peter B is, what is the proof or the evidence that he has? I mean, we should be talking uh, from an empirical um, data point of view. So one like Peter B shouldn't just make statements that, uh, that are, are not verifiable. Oh, yes, um, in, like, like everything in Nigeria, there could be uh, instances whereby the, the, the cost has been inflated. But these are not things that you want to put in the public domain without your facts and figures. Okay, let me talk about the COVID situation. It's, really, it's just unfortunate that right from day one, the COVID state governor has, has adopted a, um, a, 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 a position that I find very curious. First, he said there was no COVID-19 in COVID. Then the former chief judge of the state died of COVID. And so many things have happened since then. There, of course, he said vaccination is meant to kill people. And now it's a bit, I think the, the president needs to call him to order, really. He needs to call him to order. I mean, okay. you, you can't carry on as if you, you, you know everything and every other person doesn't know um, what's going on. It needs to be called to order. All right, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Your strategy may set Southwest on fire, Nans Wanzibo. Of course. Um, there's, there's no doubt about that. That is not a strategy. That is a knee-jerk reaction. Um, there were gaps. Somebody needed to do something, it went in there and it was doing some things. Uh, but that is not a strategy. So we must be able, I mean, I don't see any reason why we can't work with him. So the structure, the former, former system can work with a person like Igbo as well. You know, to carve out a strategy that is enduring and that will solve the problem. You know, chasing Fulani bandit 500 meters into the bush is not a solution. It's not. Absolutely yeah. not. Hmm. All right, so let's uh, talk about this one here. Um, we see this all the time, and I've talked about this on the news before, on The Breakfast. We just keep hearing promises from the government. We first heard that the first batch of COVID-19 vaccines will arrive in the country by the end of January. Um, by my calendar, it's the 3rd of February. We're still seeing fe federal government to Nigeria to while we're speculating, South Africa has received about 1 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccine yesterday or so. And uh, <clears throat> this one is still saying Nigeria to 1 million, 1 million uh, doses of COVID-19 vaccine by South Africa. Nigeria to provide 80 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines in 2021. Um, Mr. Ademola, would you, would you like to speak on this? How it seems so much money is being you know, thrown around, or so much figures have been thrown around but we're not seeing anything on ground. Yes, I, I did say on this program two weeks ago so that logistics is going to be a very um, key determinant of our success it will be in fighting COVID-19. Logistic issues, things being done, um, devoid of bureaucracy, devoid of corruption, all of that will come into play. Okay, But like we, like we said, we are happy that something has been done. It can be made better. Okay, um, the cost element, let's leave that to uh, the relevant organs of government to, to verify what we need now. We need to begin to fascinate people ASAP. The logistics should be made better and we need to just get it right. You talk about South Africa, yes, that is planning. Okay, you've got to plan, you plan, you get results. Okay, so we need to put all hands together, the PTF, the NCDC, Ministry of Health, everybody to work together to ensure we get it done. That's really very important. Mm. So the government does need to plan and, you know, take a cue from South Africa then. Yeah, Mr. Olojide, um, I think you also yeah. wanted to respond to um, Peter Obi's statement about 400 billion. Yes, billion, right? I mean, Peter Obi was a banker of several years. So when you say 400 billion is too much, you tell me how many people are going to be vaccinated, what is the cost per vaccine, what is the logistic cost, put it all together and say, oh, you arrive at 200 billion instead. That begin to make sense uh, than just Show us saying, the proof. Show us the facts. Show us the facts. Yeah, that, that yeah. is essentially what it okay. is. Okay. You know, Bob, I, I, I think we're also going to get into a place where we start to have conversations about how much money we even have for vaccines. If we need to take loans. We're going to, 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 we're going to take some loans. Oof. AU as a block is, is, talk, is discussing loans uh, already. We, we, it's not part of the uh, uh, budget. We don't have a 400 billion naira as, as budget for vaccine, uh, as it were. So we have to do some borrowing. There's no doubt about that. However, that advice from, from Bill Gates saying fix your healthcare, healthcare. system is a very important thing. 
COVID has come, COVID will go. The healthcare system will still be there. And there are many more people dying of preventable diseases than what COVID is doing. I to couldn't us. agree well, more. Uh, Mr. Kimball, I'm thinking we still have some time. Uh, Mr. Kimball, I, I want your thoughts on um, what Mr. Olujeje just said. Fixing our healthcare system. I've seen people say that it will be a shame if COVID-19 eventually passes and we see no improvement in Nigeria's healthcare. We don't learn any lessons from what COVID-19 has taught us about our healthcare system. Um, people would also argue that, you know, six years into government, the current administration should have been able to set up a healthcare system enough for um, public health officials to be able to receive treatment here in Nigeria, not always running, you know, outside the country. And so eight years might pass and we, it's likely that we may not see that much improvement. I want your quick reaction to that. Yeah, um, at the risk of sounding pessimistic, um, nothing going to change in the healthcare sector of Nigeria because what we are doing now is we do not have an existing structure that is driving our strategy on COVID-19. What we're doing is we're throwing money at the situation. What we're doing now is we, 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 we're adopting uh, an emergency approach. And all of that will happen and we won't feel any noticeable impact on the healthcare service delivery. Just like when we hosted the General World Cup in 1999 and when we hosted the Koja in 2002, uh, the expectation was that these two events would help the sports sector to grow. But here we are today, nothing has gone. The Abuja Stadium has been abandoned. Nothing, nothing is happening there. So as in all these Nigerians, like I like to say, short term, short term, short term, you do this on short term, you spend more money, okay? waste more time and you don't get uh, an enduring or sustainable impact. Okay, so Bill Gates is right. As we are doing this, it would be nice if we can begin to look at, government has promised to, 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 to produce oxygen plants in all the, all, all the states. Good idea. Let us have that done. Let's have world-class medical facilities in all local governments. It's possible. It's possible. Okay. Let that be a learning point from COVID-19 that, oh, it helped us to bring back the glory days of our healthcare facilities. Thank you very right. much, Mr. Ademola Akimbola, joining us uh, from Zoom or via Zoom. Okay. And thank you very much, Mr. Agbola Olojere, for always being here on Thanks Wednesdays. He's also going to be here for your know, later discussions you. this morning, so uh, stick around for that. Coming up next, we tell you a, a little bit about Frederick Lugard and what was called the Kano Caliphate back then in the 1900s, mm. um, many, many, many years ago. Yes, and we'll also tell you about the sad day that music died.